If you're watching this video, you're about to make a whole lot of money. I want to show you how do you actually turn your ideas into a digital product, a course, a program, something that people can exchange money for. As long as it's just an idea, it's something that you get excited about, but you have to turn that into something that people can exchange money for. I want to show you the three steps to make that happen. My goal is to help coaches and entrepreneurs turn their mind into money, teaching them how to take what they know, package it, market it, sell it, and automate it to make a massive income and massive impact, even if they don't have a lot of followers on social media. Welcome back to another episode of Monetize with Marcus. I'm your host, Marcus Warroja. The goal of this podcast is to show you how to turn your mind into money. How do you do that? Well, we all have knowledge and information in our head, but yo, it's one thing to be able to tell your sister-in-law, maybe cousin Keisha, what she should do, but it's a whole nother thing to build a business around it that allows people to see that you are the solution to their problem. People don't have a hard time paying for a problem that they have or a question that they have, and it's your job to present that, but you need strategy, and that's what this show is for, to show you how to do it. So in today's episode, I meet people all the time that get so excited about their ideas and they run to the internet and tell everyone about it. They sit at dinner and tell people about it. I was at a conference recently and saw a lady stand up. They were saying, hey, tell us your biggest takeaway and some of the things you're, you're working on this year. And she's like, well, I'm excited because I just started writing a book. And I'm like, why would you stand up to announce that you're writing something that you haven't produced yet? Because there is some excitement around ideas, not about the execution of those ideas. So I'm starting to realize if, let me word it this way. This is a quote. You ought to take this. I was, I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, yo, if everyone in your life is treated the same, somebody's being mistreated. I'm going to say it one more time. If you treat everybody you meet the same, somebody's being mistreated. Because some people in your life deserve a high level of attention, devotion, respect, honor. Some people reserve just common courtesy. Some people deserve a whole lot more than that. Well, if all your ideas are treated the same, some of your ideas are being mistreated. Because all ideas do not have the same value. All ideas don't have the same priority. So when you are an entrepreneur, creative, a content creator, however you self-identify a business owner, you're gonna be bombarded with ideas. So you need a process to learn which ideas should get your time, attention, and which ones you should put money behind. So you don't spend a, half the year chasing behind ideas that really is something that should have just been a passion project, all right? We've got to pause right there because I'm in the giving mood. I decided to offer you a free gift, absolutely free. Now, I tell you all the time about turning your ideas into online income, but how am I going to tell you to do something and not provide the resource for it? There's so many questions that people have online about what should I post? How do I get my engagement up? How do I get people to click the link in my bio? Buy from me. What should I sell? Whether it's an ebook, an online course, how much should I charge? How do I launch? How do I do a webinar? You see what I'm saying? So I decided to create a free training and give it to you that you can utilize to learn how to literally take the services that you do or the ideas you have and build a successful online company. Go to www.monetizewithmarkets.com, my gift to you. You're welcome. What is the process to decide which idea makes the most sense and then what are those steps to turn that idea into income? Well, first and foremost, the way that you choose which idea you should go with first. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there ought to be this assembly line that I like to do within myself. I always start with, I write down a list of questions. So when I say pick a problem, which is what I tell my clients, my customers, all problems are not created equal. If you have a cell phone and you crack your cell phone and you are out of the, out of the country, family, you'll wait till you get back home to get that screen fixed. But if you land and you're in Europe and you don't have a charger, you're going right away. You're not, you're not even leaving the airport. Hey, excuse me, wee wee, charger. You, you're trying to find that thing. Because that is a problem that people will immediately find a way to solve. When I start with problems, I do not start with problems that are commodities. I don't start with problems that are luxuries. I like to start with a problem that is mandatory. So when I'm thinking of business, one, the reason why we formed the business that we have now is because I didn't want the type of business that people can choose whether they want it or not. What does every business need? Like one of our offers we, is called CLS Mastermind, Create, Lunch, Sell. If you don't create something that you can exchange, that people can pay, pay for, if you don't have a way to launch it where every single day you post content and you don't have a way for new people to, to learn about you, be interested in you and buy from you, you don't have a business. So if you have no customers, 
no strategy to get customers, and no way to close sales where you don't have a business. So I decided that's a problem worth solving because people aren't willing to go long, if they're sane, long periods of time with no customers and no money. That's a problem worth solving. Now, did I have a bunch of other ideas I was passionate about? Yes. I used to want to work with entrepreneurs to teach them time management, how to better maximize their time. I'm still passionate about that. However, which one you think people will pay me for first? How to figure out how to maximize their time as an entrepreneur, or how to create offers people will buy, launch those offers, and close more sales. See what I'm saying? Both are ideas that are in my head, but one idea is a problem that people are willing to pay for, so that's how I decide the problem. The bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. So you want to choose and say, it's not, it's not a negative to make it about money when it comes to business. Here's why. The best thing, come here. Come here, you need to hear this. Pay attention. The best thing you can do for your clients is make more money. Why? Because if you make more money, you can invest in learning more so you can help more people. You can invest in a staff so now when they're DMing you, a person now manages those DMs, they don't have to wait. <laughs> you can invest in infrastructure. You can invest in marketing so you can find more people to solve more problems. You can rest more. Here's the bigger part why I tell my clients you need to make a lot of money. You can work with less people. The less money you make, the moment someone pays you, you gotta go find somebody else to pay you. And you, don't, you can't say I only work with 10 people because you need more than 10 people to make more money. Makes sense. When you make more money, you can work with less people, make larger impacts. So this is why I say the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. Choose a problem that is valued, that people will pay you more, and choose a problem that is a big problem that people have to solve right away. Now that's how you decide in business. Now, now that you decided on that problem, what are those three steps to turn that into something that you can sell? The packaging of an idea is a lost art. It's a lost art. Like the packaging of an idea is a lost art. Don't miss this family. Y'all know this is like masterclass style. Selling a product, let's use, what are we using here that I can, that I can grab? So, so I'll just say this really quick. Selling a product is totally different than creating and presenting an offer. So if I'm selling you this iPhone, I'm selling you a product. But if I say, hey, um, I decide, I've got two phones and I'm about to upgrade both of them because I realized that as an entrepreneur, I need, number one, I need the write-off. Number two, it's time for me to upgrade. It's never been cracked, hardly ever used. Like, I don't use the data or any of that. But here's, here's what I want to do. I want to give you both phones. I want to give you my cases, my chargers. On top of that, inside of, these, inside of both phones, in my note section, I got an entire drive and audio books that I'll just leave on there for you. That's an offer, not a product. I just, I just literally packaged this in a way, the packaging of this now changed it out of the context of it just being a cell phone. Make sense? So when you are going from idea to income, the first thing you gotta think of is, right, number one, how do I package the product I'm going to sell? Don't, like, how do you package this thing in a way that a person does not just see it as just something else on the internet, but they see it in a way that it separates itself from everything else? When you're choosing apples to apples, oranges to oranges, why do y'all think billion dollar companies add on, the, on a bottle of lotion now 30% more? That's an offer. <laughs> it ain't the lotion. It's the language and the marketing and it's the offer. Why do you think that someone says 100% money back guarantee? That's the offer. You should quit working for free. How did social media hire all of us to be their workforce? We're on the app posting videos, going live, creating reels. We do not get paid when we create content on social media. They do by selling our content to advertisers. But how do you actually build an online business using social media? I want to break it down for you and give you access to it. There's five simple steps. I'll tell it to you in a few seconds. Step number one is client attraction. I'm going to show you how to actually attract clients that will happily pay you what you're offering. Step number two, how to capture them. How do you get their emails? How do you get their phone numbers? How do you get them to show up to your event? Be on your Zoom calls to what I refer to as client dating. It's where you nurture a relationship with people to get them to say yes to whatever you're offering. And I'm even gonna show you what type of content to create that gives you brand visibility and brand recognition. I call it social media secrets. You get access wherever you're watching this video, you'll see it in the description and you'll see it beneath this. Let's get back to the episode. It's removing risks. All right, so number one is you're gonna package it into an offer, not just a product. Number two, 
you are going to market it in a way that is a no-brainer. How the heck do I market something that is a no-brainer? Well, I like to start in my marketing with all the reasons someone would say no, and that determines what I add in the offer. So if someone will say no because they say, man, how, I know the phone gonna, how do I know the phone's gonna work and that, that it might not mess up? Well, part of the packaging and the marketing is, I say, hey, if anything goes wrong with it, my phone number will be inside the phone. You call me anytime, return it, no problem. You'll have access to this, this and this. If someone says, like you just think through all of the reasons someone would say no, and as a part of the marketing, you should start communicating those objections as a way for you to sell it. It's one of the best ways to sell something. Because people always look for reasons to say no. So your job is to present that to them. You gotta, all right, field trip time. You gotta do that thing like, like I don't know if y'all remember Eight Mile when uh what's his name? V Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and Clarence Paris got a real good marriage, right? That joint. He basically eliminated all the things he could say about him. So when Buddy got up there, he like, uh, 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 right? That's what you do in marketing. You eliminate all the things, some reasons someone could say no. And you add that in your marketing when you package the offer. So you are packaging it, you are marketing it, and then the last thing that you're going to do if you truly are gonna turn an idea into income, there ought to be a testing period. What the heck does that mean? A testing period. Where you are going to take that same thing that you're moving into market and you choose, in business we call them KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. You are choosing when you test this thing and move into market, yo, how many people do I have to talk to to get them to say yes? And when people that say no, what are they saying? That's the testing, why? It tells you what else to add in the market and what to add in the offer. So you actually, in the idea of the income phase, are getting better at what you do because you took a problem that is worth solving, you packaged it into an offer, not just a product, you market it by removing all the reasons people will say no, and then you tested it to tra track the data of what each person said that purchased it and what each person said that did not purchase it. And ladies and gentlemen, you turned your ideas into income. I hope that you got something out of this episode. Family, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss every Monday at 12 p.m. and every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure that you subscribe, make sure that you stay tuned in. Come in and let me know if this has been adding value to you. The only thing that we ask is this add value is share it with someone and make sure you stay locked in. Well, if you need me, you know where to find me. I'll be over here minding my online business. I'll see you in the next episode.